are listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry. We are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for He is good. Yes, He is good. When Christians Speak Talk Radio is a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. So all of your gifts to this ministry are tax deductible. So go out to our website www.whenchristianspeak.com and click on our donation page. Oh, give thanks unto the Challenge to change, where transformation begins with you. Change appears to be one of the biggest hindrances to growth from relationships that I have encountered while in ministry. Our focus is usually on someone else and what they have done or are doing to us, instead of us being accountable to God and making sure we're not a stumbling block to ourselves or others. Challenge to change is about us taking personal responsibility for our Christian walk as we face challenges and issues and how to overcome them through biblical tools and techniques that we will discuss on this show. Everything about this show is encompassed in us depending on the Holy Spirit to edify, enrich, and transform lives by introducing individuals to a personal encounter with God's unconditional love. That is where real transformation begins and ends. We just thank you that you are so good. Amazing. And I mean all the time. You don't know how that'd be anything else but good. And we just thank you, Father, in advance that we come before your throne washed in the blood of Jesus. I thank you for giving me the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might. Make me a quick understanding so I do not judge by what I see with my eyes or hear with my ears, but by what your Holy Spirit reveals to me. We thank you, Jesus, for your presence and ask you to be Lord over this ministry and all that is done here. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to anoint this time of prayer and ministry. We claim the blood of Jesus over this session for our protection. We proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord here and that this is holy ground. We take authority in the name of Jesus and the power of his blood and word and command all evil spirits to leave this property now. We claim this room sealed in the name and authority of Jesus. We bind and forbid any evil spirits on the outside from having any knowledge or influence in this room. We thank you that the battle is the Lord's, but the victory is ours. We thank you that you have the right to adjust, to shift, to change, to move, to do whatever is necessary bring forth your glory, your power, your might, your dominion, your increase, your peace, your victory in every area of our lives. And we just call it manifested in Jesus name and all in agreement. Say amen. 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 Y'all can have a seat if you can. Glory. Thank you, worshipers. God is so good. I just thank you that that's a decision that we make today that we're just going to focus on how good he is, what he does on a continuous basis. He's so good that we walk outside of his goodness. And, and how fast do we need to get back in it? Just turn right around. Just repent right then and there and just get it done. So I just want to welcome you. Just glad that you're here. Glad that you're ready to receive. Because I'm ready to teach under his anointing in Jesus' name. All right, guys, doing a series on who has your permission slip. I had a young man that uh, his father was uh, uh, he wasn't able to... to Listen to his church that Sunday, so he decided uh, that he was going to. So my friend, the cyclist friend, the hundred mile friend, said he told his dad, "Well, dad, you need to look at this." And so uh, when when Lloyd came home, I mean, came to visit his dad, he uh, said something to him. What, what did you say to your dad? Oh, you heard? That's her. He just asked his dad how he was doing. 
Dad said, who, who has your permission slip? So he let his son know that I was listening, that he was listening to what his son had asked him to do. So who has your permission slip? Because see, you're grown now. You're not the little boy or the little girl. You're grown now. So you should have your permission slip. So let's look at a scripture about this. So we talked about the definition of permission is the right or ability to do something that is given by someone who has the power to decide if it will be allowed or permitted. And I reread that to include yourself in it. The right or ability to do something that is given by someone. Who's the someone? Say me. So you give yourself permission to allow or permit what's going on in your life. If it's not good, who gave it permission? If it's going well, who gave it permission? Because see, according to Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, it says, I tell you the truth. It's Jesus talking about. Whatsoever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. See, that, that's powerful. I mean, whatever we do, whatever we say has the permission to go past the natural realm. And it goes into the spiritual realm where heaven is located. And then it goes on to say, and whatever you, y- y'all read this one with me. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So we have the ability to permit something that heaven will permit, heaven will allow. So what are we permitting? What are we permitting? Are we permitting victory to manifest in our life? Or are we permitting defeat to live, to knock on the door and say, hey, you're going to let me in? Are you going to let them in? That's a real question. So have we given ourselves permission to? So last week I talked about permission to love. What do you love? That's a real question. What do you love? My family? Who else? Call it out. I'll I, I repeat it. Food? I'm with you. Who, who said food? There it is right there. What else do you love? The beach. The beach. Okay. All right. All right. Music? Myself? Adventure. Okay. My wife? Oh, 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 he, he, he just got the brownie points. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Dale. Go ahead. I'm going to stop right there because I don't know where y'all meet that one. All right, I don't know where y'all be that one. <laughs> so we talked about life. Now, have you given yourself permission to dream? What happened to your dreams? Because God gave us the permission to dream. We know that because I'm right here. I'm a pastor. I dreamed of being that one day. You know what? I used to go outside because see, we we lived in the country area. We had peach trees and apple trees in the backyard. My dad had a garden back there. So, you know, then it was like a football field. Then across that was a whole neighborhood called Pine Street. And what I would do is I built me a little podium. And I walked out, but the podium was jacked up. The podium was like this. It was jacked up. But that's all right. <laughs> and so I would go out there and preach. And, and the people would come out on the porch. Now, it was way across the way. And they would come out on the porch, and I would preach. So I was preaching at about eight, nine years old. But then when Jesus, when God called me to preach, then I ran. See, see, you can dream, but then you can run from the dream. So, guys, what's your dream? If you're sick, have you had a dream about being healthy? If you're poor, have you had a dream about being wealthy? Are you, uh, uh, how's your mind? How's your head? Is your head jacked up? Have you ever dreamed about having peace in your mind? See, you can't pay for peace, but God can give you peace. If we follow and do the things he's called us to do. Are you having dreams about a spouse? I'm looking straight ahead. I don't hear nothing on the right side. I don't hear nothing on the left side. Anybody believe for a spouse over on this side? I I see one, two, three. Okay. What about this side? Uh, Okay. All right. So dream for it. But stay in his dream. So when I say stay in his dream, his word is clear. Don't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So if that dream has unbelievers in it, and I'm going to tell you right now, don't tell me that I I believe I'm going to get them saved. Okay? He needs to be or she needs to be saved when you get them. And we ain't talking about no baby in Christ. You've been in Christ for 12 years. Don't go grab somebody who's been into it, just got born again. Because see, you're already unequally yoked because y'all not on the same level. But I'm talking about dreams. Who has a dream that you stop dreaming because somebody told you, you that won't happen for you. You didn't finish school. 
You don't have enough money. You're the wrong color. You're the wrong size. You're the wrong person. But what did God say about your dream? My wife and I was talking one day, and, and we was talking about enlarging the church. You know, we got to buy this and we got to buy that. And she said, well, Paul, why don't we just knock the wall down? And see, when, when someone speaks a dream out of the anointing of God, you can't get rid of it. Anybody ever had a dream spoke to you and you can't get rid of? You know what I'm talking about. And so, you know, it's like she said it and, and we, we, we just said, okay. I said, well, okay, honey, let me think about it. So I came to church that day because I had some counseling session. And what happened was I walked in here and I didn't see the walls. So the walls were still up, but she had spoke a dream. And I saw the dream feel fulfilled. But not one person had known about it other than her and I. But then I came back the next day and I still couldn't find the wall. Because see, when you believe in a dream, you start to act as if it's so. Because God's word says, call things that be not as though they already existed. So then I come to church on Sunday and then I share it with the people. And then you, you, you know some people sleep in church. Y'all know that, right? Anybody else step, 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 uh, sat beside somebody sleep in church? Raise, raise your hand if you. Okay, everybody been there? And, and, and even they woke up when I started talking about, we're going to knock the wall down and, and we're going to build a church all the way over. Even the sleep people woke up. Because I stopped that dream and brought them to a new dream. Now, who you need to stop in their old dream and bring them to a new dream? That's what happened when we got born again. Right? When we got born again, there was a new dream that was placed in us called being a believer. Going to church. Yeah, we, we, we didn't used to go to church, did we? Oh, you, you did. Okay, my mama, mama told us, yeah, she, you, you. how many of y'all been, been in a household where you could party all night, Sharon, but you had to make sure your butt's in church on Sunday. You weren't listening, you were still asleep, hungover and everything. But then when the dream manifested, then we started to not party at night, but rest so that we could receive the word. Then the word got on the inside of us and we started to have new dreams. Instead of cussing people out, we decided we were going to forgive them. Some of y'all still got the forgiveness dream or y'all still got the cuss out dream? Okay, all right. I don't see nobody's hand raised. No, no, no. The, huh? We're working on pastor. Working on the pastor. All right, sister. So as long as you're working on it, it's going to keep coming your way until you cross over to the other side. Until you go to from one dream to the new dream. Because the new dream got good stuff in it. The new dream got good stuff in it. What's in your dream? See, see, God didn't say, he, he said count the cost. And say try to figure it out. He said count the cost. What are you trying to figure out? But you know, you, you, you have, I've had some people come in for counseling. And they talk about, well, you know, I really want to go back to school, but it's going to be five years. I said, well, how old are you now? They said, well, I'm 55, 50. I'm going to make, make the numbers easy for me. Because they all, they all, oh, they all over there. That, that's my mathematician. And so he, he, the, the guy said, I'm, I'm, I'm 50. And I said, well, how long will it take for the degree? He said, four years. And I said, okay, so you'd be 54 in, in four years? I said, well, how long will it take if you, you do the dream? If you go back to school, he say 54. So I say, you're going to be the same age whether you go or not. Why not just go? Right, right this now. I ain't said right there in a long time. Make a decision. Give yourself permission to not live with regret. See, the re regret is something you can't go back and fix. Give yourself permission to dream without regret. So when you close your eyes or God takes you to glory or you receive glory, make sure that you don't have anything you got to look back on and say, I wish I had her. If only I could have. You don't want to live life like that. When you make a decision, go for it. But make sure you count the cost. How, how many of us jump in dreams without counting the cost? Yeah, yeah, you jump in them? And, and, and what the scripture say about that? They say the people are going to laugh at you because you didn't finish. You follow me? So count the cost. Second thing, are you willing to do life? Are you ready to grow? Uh-oh, that's, that's a curse, curse word. Are you ready to grow? What's wrong with growing? What, 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 what are we afraid of, Ed, when we grow? What are we afraid of, guy? What is it? Pain? Afraid of pain? So we don't want to grow because of pain? Raise your hand. Wayne, you hear one? Somebody over here? What are we afraid of to grow? You can't go back to that mess you was doing when you were not growing. Okay, so you can't go back to the, the mess you were doing? 
Sharon? You're afraid to grow because it's uncomfortable. Okay, it's uncomfortable to grow. How many of y'all agree with that? It's uncomfortable to grow? But, but how many of you have grown being uncomfortable, and is it better or is it worse? What, 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 what's better about it? Yeah, talk to me. Raise your hand. Let me hear from you. What's better about the thing that you were afraid of, you grew, and then what, what's better about that? Well, at first, there were a lot of unknowns to okay. you. But when you actually walked in that thing that was not comfortable for you, you found out that, oh, this is not that bad after all. Okay. It just gets easier and easier and easier. Okay. And it becomes more comfortable. Okay. So in that particular area for you, Sharon, how long did it take before you saw that it was better? Uh, <laughs> and to be honest. Well, we're talking about sound. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, I, Is it better still out or you got it? I feel so much better than okay. I did when I began. Okay. But okay. I know that it is a learning process okay. Okay. and it's not going to be done within a certain length of time gotcha. okay. because there's so much to learn. Okay. And okay. I'm excited about that. Okay. One. Okay. Amen. Wayne? I feel better about myself. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, my sense of self-worth had gotten better. Okay. Because I gave myself permission to um, basically say no to some things that I would never okay. say before. Okay. Yeah, so I feel, I feel confident, more comfortable about myself. Okay. All right. Y'all ready for this? Write this down. No is good. If you are a person who say yes to everything because you are afraid to say no, no is good. And the Bible clearly says, he says, let your yes be yes and you know no. Why is that? Because if we say anything else, we're going to lie. You know you don't have nowhere else to go. <laughs> no, I can't, I, no, I can't do that because I have to go to a cookout, a movie, a dinner, and, and you just keep lying. Just say no. Y'all ready to practice it? On, on the count of two, we're going to say no. On, on the count of two. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, okay, all right, okay. All right, okay, all right, okay. <laughs> okay they, they, they weren't listening. They weren't listening, okay. Here are the instructions. <laughs> At the count of two, say no. One, two, no. How, how'd that feel? Felt good. <laughs> See, we're still growing at this church, right, man? What, what else you need to grow in? Do you need to grow in your faith? Do you need to grow in your giving? Oh, this is a curse word. Do you need to grow in, in forgiving? People just hold on to stuff. We, 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 we did this a couple years ago. I asked, what's the longest someone walked in unforgiveness? Somebody did 25 years. Was it 25 or was it 50, honey? 25? It was 40-something. You remember that one? Okay, okay. I, and they thought it was cool, too. I mean, you could be in unforgiveness so long, you forgot what you, you in unforgiveness about. Person come up and start talking to you, and you don't say nothing. You're looking all angry and stuff like that, and they, they forgot what. I mean, it's like they starting to talk to you, but you still in unforgiveness. But you forgot what it's for. To grow, you got to walk in forgiveness. That's just the best place to be. Because see, I mean, your mind has over 300,000 thoughts that manifest per minute. And so you got that unforgiveness that you got to keep moving that thing around. Because when we're ready to grow, God's ready to go. I mean, he's ready for us. He's, he's excited about us. Somebody was spoken to this morning about the time to grow. Time to take the next step. Raise your hand. Who is that? I'm not going to call you up. Seriously, I'm not going to call you up. I'm not going to lay hands on you about going. Who is it? God has told you that it's time to grow. Don't come up to me after church. I say, okay, there it is. See, see. <laughs> Pastor, you were talking to me, but I didn't want to raise my hand. So can we pray while you're in your seat? And I'm only talking to these two people. Because, see, for you to grow, you needed to raise your hand. Follow me? See, you got to get to a place where you don't care who you're sitting beside. Y'all ever notice that when you invite friends to come to church with you, you get kind of funny because it's like you, you're trying to peep over. Instead of worshiping God, you peeping over to see what they're doing. But see, just take yourself to the blind man that's, that's blind. He's blind. Now, everybody that's telling him to shut up can see. Now, he has a decision to make. Am I going to listen to these people that can see? Or am I going to listen to what I need from God, which is the ability to see? So the more they tell him to shut up, the more he cry out the louder. Because he knows that if he missed this opportunity, they're going to go home seeing, and he's going to still go home blind. So see, your person that you're sitting beside, they don't know what you've been through this week. You don't know what they've been through this week. 
So when it's time to praise and worship God, he did. He delivered you. I don't know what happened to the person beside me, but I know I'm going to say thank you to the person that delivered me. So this blind man, he's making the decision. Y'all can shut up, but I'm going to see. Because I don't know the next time that I'm going to see uh, here that Jesus is coming by. So you need to get what you need. Because see, it's your time to grow. It's your time. I don't care how old you are. It's your time to grow. So for these two people to raise their hand, repeat after me. I ain't forget about y'all. So repeat after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. I repent for allowing fear, shame, and condemnation to operate and to hinder my growth. And now that I've gotten rid of that, I made a decision and I'm giving myself permission to grow, to grow beyond measure, to grow under your anointing, to grow in your peace, to grow in your discernment, because I believe that now is the time because I've ran long enough and I ran right to you in Jesus name. Amen. So put a time and day stamp on it. Why we do time and day stamp? Because when the enemy comes and says you didn't get it, you want to smack him with at 1036. What's the day to day? 725. That's when I received it. I received growth then. Are you willing to do life? Are you willing to succeed? Have you given yourself permission to succeed? Have you? What does success look like to you? See, the fear of failure is you can't do it. The fear of success is you can't maintain it. So see, a lot of times we don't operate in success is because we're afraid that we can't maintain it. But see, God doesn't give you things and take it back. God gives you things to continue to grow it. So this ministry is supposed to continue to grow because he didn't say I'm going to minimize it. He says I'm going to maximize it. So when you see movie stars and you see rock stars and you see people who came to a place of ending their life, it's because of the fear of success. If, I, if I'm the person who got all the number one hits and more than anybody who's ever been in music, then don't you think they got to figure out how can I beat that? So you can't sleep at night, you can't rest at night, but God's success is different. Everything he designed, he designed it to grow. Amen? Are you still the little baby you was in the womb? He designed it to succeed. He designed it to grow. He designed it to succeed in the fact that when someone asked you, how did you do it? You said, God. God gave this to me. I did what he told me to do, and this is why I'm successful. I got one. I got two. Um, good morning, Pastor. So I have a dream. Okay. I've always had this dream since I was a kid. And the dream, it, the reality of it is smacking me in the face. Okay. But how do I know that it's just, it's not just something I want to do that I dream of and not something that he wants me to do. I think, the- I, I think at this point I'm because I'm more in tune with Christ and when he's speaking to me and, um, Right and wrong, I don't know what to do about this thing that I've always wanted to do and be since I was a child. Okay, all right. So ask them. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. This dream that I had as a child. This dream I've had as a child. Is it my dream? Is it my dream? Or the dream you placed in me? Or the dream you placed in me. I'm ready to hear. I'm ready to hear. And he talks fast. And what do he say? Look, she's scared to answer. She's scared to answer. What do he say? I, what was the question again, Pastor? <laughs> no, I mean, you gave me one word. What was the one word? What was the question? What was the one word? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see right there. I got two people right there. But 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 I want you to write something down, guys. I want you to ch- I want you to take a look at this. The re- I'm gonna say it first. The reason why he told her when she was a child, because he knew when she became an adult, she wouldn't listen. Do you talk to your children the same way the older they get? Because you understand that over time, they become more proficient in ability to reason and listen and so forth. So he said, if I tell her when she's a child, she can't reason it away. So see, I just want you to understand, if you keep going back to try to find God's word in areas that you used to be in, he's no longer there because he knows you have already grown. 
In, any other question about that? Or I can continue. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let, let me get these two and then I'll come back to you. Uh, somebody comment or something? Yes. Online, someone said, is giving myself permission to succeed tied to giving myself permission to dream? Yes. Dream is what you need to, to re give yourself permission to dream so that you can go to the next level of succeeding. Okay. Right, Wayne, you give it there some? It might come your way. I please want you to repeat very slowly what you just said, God. Okay won't repeat a word to yourself where you were because all right y'all gotta help me because once i say it under anointing it, it, it's gone for me give, give a mic right here okay if you're looking for him to be where he was he knows that you've already grown and i would love uh, yeah so he's not he's he's not going to use the same formula he used when you were a child to talk to you that's why you hear me say god talks fast because when I was coming up, where I learned was you, you ask God something and you got to fast, you got to pray, you got to wait a couple of days and so forth. But then after the more, the closer I got to him and the more I started to do more counseling, more talking and talking to the Holy Spirit because he's the teacher, he's the guy, he's to take the things of God and show it to us. So then, you know, I'm in sessions and I need an answer right away. So then I saw how fast he answered, and I say, okay, so God talks fast. So I plant that seed in people to understand that if I ask you, what's your name? See how fast he answered that? If we made in the image of God, when we ask things, he answers. Because I want to take away from people this thing that you got to wait a long time for an answer. So if I was, because I've grown, and because I know he talks fast, I'm not going to go all the way over here and fast for five days waiting on God to tell me something that he tells me instantly. So if I go all the way to where I used to go to, to wait to hear, he's not there anymore because he talks to me fast. You follow me? Ashley, what you got? She, she's still trying to figure this thing out. She's still trying to make it. Come, go, go ahead, Ashley, but I'm listening. So, Pastor, he said yes, right? Uh-huh. And this dream is big. Uh-huh. Y'all ever got a small dream from God? Okay, I'm just, I'm just asking questions. But every okay. part of it is big. Uh huh. Yeah, every part of it's gonna be hard. Okay, cause see, you you trying to figure out how it's gonna be done. Right. That ain't your job. Right. Your job is to say yes to the dream. You you see these people that's here. These people started to come when they heard about the dream. Oh oh, you 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 gonna have a church? You gonna start a church? Oh oh oh, so you gonna knock down a wall and, and you need some finances? This is one giving church. Y'all just giving crazy. I, I mean, it's like giving crazy. But see, I didn't know that until I asked for finances. We got to do this and it's going to call such and such. Pick two people with Megan and Teresa. They came up and they started talking. They into, did they twist anybody's arm? Did they meet you outside in the hallway? <laughs> Security, take them out. Take them out. <laughs> But you won't know what's there until it's needed. So when I need a sound person, sound person there. Video person there. Worship, certain, they there. Now they're coming out of work work. I mean, team one, two, three. But see, you don't need it until it's, it's needed. Because see, check this out. If, if faith wasn't necessary, then God wouldn't have had to come. If we could have figured everything out on our own top, we would need Jesus. But see, faith is, you, you, you stand right here, faith is, I'm going to take this step, and I'm going to land where I need to land. But you got to take the step. When it's time for the next step, you'll know. Yes, ma'am. So, Pastor, I have a dream. I've had it for okay. like 20 years. 20 years, okay. And I know I'm supposed to do it. God even knocked at my door. I said, yes. He told me to get to moving, right? Okay. So, I was walking with Nicole, and I was talking about my dream. She's like, she started trying to hold me accountable. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So... <laughs> She's like, when you going to do it? No, uh -huh. no, give me a date. She want she to pin me down to a date. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm telling her the reasons why I, okay. I can't do it yet. Mm -hmm. But then she gave me resources to help me Ooh, move forward. Okay. Okay. And then other people have come along. So it's like, my worry was how I'm going to do this. Like, I don't, I'm not a good writer. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But people have been coming just to lead me mm -hmm. where I'm supposed to go. So mm -hmm. if it's the dream from God, it falls in line. And people come. They help you. So. Okay. So, you know, I just got a question. Just got a question. Mind my own business. Did I ask people who, who had a dream? Did, did I ask them and these two be raised their hand? Did, is that a dream? 
Okay. I, I just need to ask a question. That's all. Okay. So, so just do what you're supposed to do. The resources are coming. Just do what you're supposed to do. C -c can I give you a little, little, little rest for a second? Until you say yes to the dream and give it permission, you won't have rest. Because, see, th there's somebody who's waiting on your dream to answer a question that God, they have went to God about. And only you can answer. Only you can answer. And only you can answer. Like there's, there's answers that have been manifested because I said yes. And I gave God permission. And then remember last week when I said I gave God permission for me to be known internationally, bringing God glory. And when you would ask me, say, okay, pastor, what's your counseling percentage? And I said, 98% is women, 1% is children, and 1% men. This week, I got a call from five men that wanted counseling sessions. But when I gave myself permission to be known, now men can know me. So those five men had been waiting for somebody to give permission so that they could call. So my question to you today is, who are you hindering because God trusts you? See, he didn't give uh, uh, Tamika my dream. He trusts me with my dream the same way he trusts her with his. So who is waiting on your dream, you to say yes to the dream, permission, so that God can manifest their deliverance? in whatever area they bound by. It's not pressure, it's truth. This ministry is a ministry about relationships, about mental health, about your thinking, about forgiveness. Say forgiveness. forgiveness. So, so if that's operating in your life, that's where, you, that's where you're going to come. But somebody else has a vision about, another pastor has another vision about faith. That's where you would go. Now these things can be intermingled but the focus is, I'm going to stay in those areas. Because what did he call me to? Those areas. But answer the question. Who is waiting on your dream? Because there's a lot of people waiting on it. Amen? So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, just thank you. Thank you that you are Lord in our lives. But I thank you that today you wanted me to talk about the dream, the success, the growth, because not growing is not good for us. Because if you design everything to grow up and we decide not to grow, then we've hindered our growth. We have hindered our success. We've hindered our dream. So we repent of not entering into that place that you called us to. But today, you knew where I was going to be. And you knew where the people who are, want to be saved were going to be. And when I answer this dream, you answer their salvation. So those in the congregation, you feel free to acknowledge this prayer that we're about to pray. But otherwise, if you're already saved, then I want you to pray in agreement with those who are about to pray. So repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. You say it in Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if I would confess with my mouth. And believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I have eternal life. Thank you, Father, for giving me the Son, the S-O-N. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And just go to ChosenRVA.com and go to new members. And there's salvation information. There's a teaching that my wife and I did on salvation so you'll understand what just took place. Amen? This concludes today's message on Challenge to Change where real transformation begins with you with Pastor Paul Morgan. If you are ever in the Richmond, Virginia area, join Pastor Paul for Sunday service at 10 a.m. at Chosen Generation Ministries. The website is www.chosenrva.com or call at 866-333-9505.